Good morning, folks. We have an incredible rundown of news for you here today, including volcanoes, climate, ETs, wildfires, cosmic rays, and cosmology. We're getting started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 24 hours were exceptionally calm, enough for our focus to be squarely with the dark coronal holes and thin plasma filament between them. Thus far, the coronal holes remain the primary watch factor as solar wind decreased intensity over the last 24 hours, leading us back into geomagnetic quiet following the instability marks the last two days. But these coronal holes will start impacting Earth with their solar wind later this week and continue probably into early next week. And of course, elevate the seismic alert when that left side crosses center disk tonight. Now in that vein, the same region rocked with an earthquake and tsunami a few days ago just had a volcano go off the last few hours large plume rising over the Indonesian islands there. Let's start the science rundown at the galactic level. ESA has spotted numerous intergalactic stars zipping through space, but whereas they expected most to be exiting the Milky Way, the opposite was found. Most are incoming. Up next, we're looking at slightly larger extragalactic companions. Four new ultra-faint dwarf galaxies are in the neighborhood. This matters for galactic dynamics. For those who have been here long enough to understand the negative effects of cosmic rays and who know we've hit the modern cosmic ray maximum and are forecast to head higher most of the century, a new direct link to negative gastrointestinal outcomes shows why cosmic rays are still the great barrier in space safety and possibly a serious issue on Earth this century. I want to hit this article as I know it's some of our outside interests to find life outside the Earth, encouraging article here about how little of the sky we've actually searched and that's if we presume they're not actively covert and they're able to be seen. In a global warming study, they found that wildfire smoke has a longer lasting carbon effect than realized. They use this to say that climate models may underestimate warming in the future if they don't take this into account. The problem for global warming is this shifts previous blame to wildfires that was on human emissions. They say wildfire carbon effect was detected seven times longer than expected, and in most current climate models, all of that just gets blamed on us. I want to use this paper, which probably isn't going to get much disagreement from any community, but in this one we have the additional component of recognizing that black holes are something slightly more electromagnetically complex than is recognized in the mainstream. Alas, it's not like there's nothing there. Black holes are still something, and that's where we jump into this newest animation heralded as a great informer of the cosmos. With help from RIT, this animation is supposed to show the lensing and weird light effects of merging supermassive black holes, but, well, perhaps the most important region of the system is not modeled in the simulation. That third black area in the middle would not be expected to be black, they just cut the whole thing out and told the computer to pretend it isn't there. This is because if they didn't do that, they don't have a model. The dynamics make no sense, and frankly, I am a bit astounded at the nerve to do such a thing. Hey everyone, this model tells us about how the universe works provided that space between the supermassive black holes isn't really there. Well played. Folks, last night I posted both of Dr. Uyen's 2015 presentations. Three years old or not, they are conceptual and utterly relevant now, and especially into the future, about two hours total. We are still on backup machines here, but that won't stop the wind maps, satellites, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.